Welcome to this video tutorial all about seasonal indices, where in today's video, we are going to be focusing in on calculating missing seasonal indice values. So when we are looking at seasonal indices, we know that they have a mean value of one. This means that the number of seasonal indices is equal to the number of seasons. What this is telling us that if we have four seasons, then the sum of our seasonal indices will be equal to four. Likewise, if we were to have 12 months or 12 seasons, the sum of those seasonal indices will be 12. We're going to use that concept to help us with this problem here, whereby we have been given an incomplete seasonal indice table for these four seasons. We can see that we have seasonal indice values for spring, summer and winter. However, our autumn is unknown. So we can use our knowledge that the sum of the seasonal indices equal the number of seasons to help us. We're going to start off by taking all of the values that we know, which we have 0 0.6, 1.3, and 0 0.5. And we know that if we are to take those three values as well as our unknown autumn value, this is going to equal four. Once we've set this up, it's just a case of solving this linear equation to find our unknown autumn seasonal indice. So let's make this equation look a little bit nicer. We have x plus 2.4 equals four. We're gonna subtract 2.4 from each side. And that means our unknown autumn seasonal index or x is going to equal 1.6. Sometimes our missing seasonal index problems are going to be a little bit more involved and have multiple unknown seasonal indices, such as this one here. We've been given six seasons in total, split a year into two month increments. And we can see that in three of these instances, we have unknown seasonal indices, and they've been denoted by 2x, x, and 3x. So we're gonna use all of this information in the table that we've been given, along with the knowledge that all of these seasonal indices add up to six, to help us find our three unknown seasonal indices. Again, we're going to start off by setting up our equation with the knowledge that if we take each of these seasonal indices, both known and unknown, add them together, that they will equal a total of six. Again, we can now simplify and solve this equation for our unknown variable x. We're gonna clean up this left-hand side a little bit to get six x plus 1.8 equals six. We'll subtract 1.8 from both sides to get 4.2. And this will give us an x value after dividing both sides by 6 of 0 0.7. So this has helped us found our unknown variable x. However, we haven't finished yet and we still need to establish what our three unknown seasonal indices are. Now May to June is going to be our easiest one because that's just the same as x which is going to be 0.7. Our other two, we're going to need to manipulate this x value in order to find the final seasonal index. So our seasonal index for March to April, we've been told is 2x. So we need to take our x value of 0.7, multiply it by two. So our final seasonal index is 1.4. Lucky last, we need to find the seasonal index for September to October. 
and we know that this is going to be 3x. So similar to like we did with March and April, we're going to take our unknown value and multiply it by 3. So we're going to have a final seasonal index of 2.1. And that is how we can use our knowledge of the sum of the seasonal indexes equaling the number of seasons to help us find any missing seasonal indices values within our time series data. Happy solving. Let me know in the comments below how you went with your missing seasonal indice problems. And also don't forget to comment if there's any additional topics that you want to see covered in these videos.